Well, in the first place, I think it's entirely wrong to make a crime out of a hormonal imbalance in the human body. And number two, I think within the framework of the uh, Christian ethic, it's wrong to uh, condemn rather than to forgive and to try to help. One is to encourage people to conserve on, on energy. At the present time, the more electricity you, you use, the, the lower the rate that you, that you pay. And we would uh, turn that around. The more you use, the rates would start to, start to go up. And the second purpose would be that, uh, particularly to help like low-income elderly and other people who use a minimum amount of electricity, now they are charged at the highest rate. And we would say that the first few hundred kilowatt hours of electricity that, that you use would be at a lower rate than subsequent rates rather than the highest rate is presently the, the situation. Iowa Power says the problem always concerns peak usage. By law, utilities must build those costly facilities to provide power, whether at minimum usage or at those peak times, those hot summer days when air conditioners roar. Both Iowa Power and the legislature say they are interested in rate changes. The problem is providing an economic incentive for both conservation and efficiency. This is Dick Voss reporting for Newswatch. Well, yes, we're not only trying to help industry, we're really trying to help uh, clean up our environment or help to keep our environment in the best shape. What we're trying to focus on here is is how best to utilize waste, all kinds of waste, industrial waste, uh, agricultural waste, any waste that's put back on the land. We're focusing on the land and on keeping our water and air uh, as pure as we can and utilizing these waste. What we're really trying to reach here is the anybody that's using land for putting waste on.
Kentucky. I disagree uh, with the budget in view of the fact that the taxes of ours continue to go up. So regardless of the budget, the taxes are still up. And in other words, the price of the uh, dollars per thousand of taxation. A plan that could save Des Moines money on future budgets was proposed by the Taxpayers Association. That organization advised the city council to inform the state that mandated funding for pension plans be covered by the state and not the city. The association says state mandated pension plans are eating away large portions of city budgets and will cost the taxpayer ever increasing amounts of money. This is Craig King reporting for Newswatch. To the month of, of February, and, and, and people. Well, now you and, and now, now we have. That. Since we are short on management groups and so forth, we have had to have Lowell here uh, do the accounting procedures daily, uh, do the management of the business and operations daily, and consequently, he hasn't had time to really develop either one real well. But Cyride's biggest problem is money, money to keep it going until the system is honed. More on that in part two. Brett Voorhees reporting for Newswatch. Let's Submitted proposals. There's federal 78. There's an effect right now, and I'm sure it'll be. Teachers are that way, and I'll tell you, I don't. Mr. Chapman told me on the. There's so many Mexican American kids who have graduated who have diplomas from school and are back in classes right now learning to read and write. If we can get those parents together, and I'm sure we can because most of them are backing this thing up right now, you know, to file suit against the school board. If that's necessary, that's what we'll do. Well, of course, I feel that uh, apparently there's been some misunderstanding. I, uh, I certainly don't feel there's any justification for apparently some of the comments that have been made. I, I, I'm, I'm just not convinced that uh, the children have been mistreated to the extent that they feel they have been. There are 600 Mexican-American children in the Des Moines school system. Many of their parents would like to see an influx of bilingual Chicano teachers and counselors to aid current language and culture problems that exist. School system spokesmen also agree bilingual teachers could aid the current situation. Possibly that's where conciliation between the two parties will begin. This is Craig King reporting for Newswatch. It's not a, a package to solve all the property tax problems. It's more or less a stopgap measure that covers a two-year period. And we have set in the governor's task force and expanded a little. And uh, we also are having them report back by January 10th, 1977, mainly because we know there are more problems to deal with the property tax situation. It's a very complex issue. And we knew we couldn't resolve everything this uh, session. We just need more time to really go over it thoroughly and overhaul it completely.
To understand the money troubles of Syride, you have to understand the relationship between the city and Syride. of the system, you've got to develop some kind of a, of a program that internally allows you to know what you're doing daily. I'm also concerned because it seems to me that this is somewhat of a different philosophy about the subsidization of the program. For the first time, we're getting into a direct cash subsidy per day for a fixed period of days when we already uh, appear to be overrunning the budget considerably. Uh, I really anticipated some opening day and opening week, maybe opening weeks problems, but uh, the the concern I think I share with many of the council people is that we do not appear to be getting as much improvement as we had anticipated. Some members of the city council doubt the abilities of the current Syride manager. Syride will continue, but its form may change. A new manager may be hired, or the city may be forced to operate it. He is reporting for Newswatch.